Hello, and welcome to Tonalist Painting with M. Francis McCarthy. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy. And welcome as well to 25 Days of Tonalism, Volume 2, Day 24. The painting that we are uh, doing today is uh, painted after George Ness. It's called Sunset Glow. And I uh, really like this little study. Really love George Ness's painting and... Uh, George Ness is one of my all-time favorite painters and probably the best landscape painter that ever lived. Of course, those things are subjective and debatable, but uh, um, speaking for myself, there's nobody I love more. You know, there's some that come close, John Francis Murphy being one of them, Charles Warren Eaton as well. I have to say, though, both of those guys had... Uh, it took me a while to find those, um, but... Um, whatever so did George Ines actually sometimes he was really off but uh, when he was on he was on like the dawn that's what I like to say anyway um, this painting actually looks like it went really quick um, it's sped up it's only sped up about I don't know six or seven times more than it took me to do it I don't know something like I get try I lose track of the math let's face it I'm an artist I'm not a uh, an engineer but uh, it, it did go quick um, George Ness was a master of the simplification of the form and uh, a, a complete and utter master of composition and color and values ah he was so great and uh, I love doing studies after his work now I've like I was telling you um, probably last week or the week before I have decided to go ahead and move forward with uh, 25 Days of Tonalism Volume 3. I've been uh, I've been cutting uh, cutting aside swaths of time to finish those paintings. I did two this morning. I am sort of loath to do any more because I, I got to get into my own stuff, and that's the thing. This bites into um, me doing my own work, but it does pay off. I have to say. <clears throat> Much as I would rather uh, sometimes get into uh, doing one of my own uh, motifs or compositions, I learn a lot from doing these studies. And if you're an aspiring tonalist painter, um, you could do a lot worse than to try and make a copy after your favorite George Ness painting or John Francis Murphy. Uh, you could do a lot worse because you'll learn so much doing it. and really it's uh, so much of what is involved with doing good painting is is muscle memory you have to internalize these uh, much of the stuff you do because so many you're making thousands and thousands of decisions and a, a fair amount of those are conscious decisions but an even larger amount of those are unconscious decisions and the unconscious decisions are informed by um, experience all the times you've painted all the times you've been there all the times you've you've done the light part of the tree over the dark bit of the tree all the times you've tried to paint the edge of a cloud or all the times you've tried to paint the edge of the tree over the sky and get it looking uh, so it's not a, like a cutout uh, cardboard cutout things like that there's no substitute for it and so um, the other thing is, of course, is that it will stretch you out. It will get you to do things uh, that you wouldn't normally do. And uh, in little and big ways, that's really changed the way I paint doing the, uh, the 100 Days of Tonalism almost two years ago now. In fact, we're kind of into the anniversary, I think, of the end of the 100 Days of Tonalism. And uh, uh, we did the uh, 25 Days of Tonalism. Uh, oh, it took me a while. I think six months later, I was pretty burned out I have to say the hundred days I rolled out one video every day of course I'm back into that now with the toneless minutes and if you if you haven't been uh, tuning in for the toneless minutes you want to go watch them they're all you know it's the same great quality painting uh, in a shorter format that's how I like to uh, put it across um, let's see what else we want to say about old George uh, well I know a lot about George and S uh, except for uh, not much is known necessarily about how he painted. He was known for picking and scratching and doing whatever he could do to get the painting done. And uh, that's me too, you know, if I got to pick and scratch. I will say that um, 
I was uh, I was working on a um, study uh, for the uh, 25 Days of Tonalism Volume 3 today, and it was a study after a John Francis Murphy. And having worked on a John Francis Murphy uh, this week um, called Stormy Day, um, that was being done on a heavily textured board. Um, that made it so easy to get the Murphy feel across. It was not even funny. And um, so today I'm working on another Murphy study, but on a far less textured board. And I have to say, um, there's a lot more artifice involved. There's a lot more, uh, you know, little jits of the brush here and there. Whereas, uh, you know, if the board had been more heavily textured, I could have just done a little drag over the surface and really got the effect and uh, that is good to note and uh, you know Ines worked with texture as well but I don't think he actively went in and, and, and gessoed his canvases with a textured approach in mind I think a lot of his texture just came from sometimes he would do up to 40 paintings over the top of um, older paintings and just keep going and keep going until he found something he was happy with and that's really awesome too and in fact that's one of the things that led me to deciding to uh, get back into texturing my boards I had tried texturing my boards way back in 2009 and I had some paintings I did back then I thought were pretty good but ultimately I just dropped it in favor of actually doing really just completely smooth boards they almost had a uh, a furniture finish like a cabinet door or something like that and I did that for a while and then I I started working with some texture on my 5x7 studies and um, I viewed that was a lighter texture though pretty much just done with the side of a brush and uh, uh, repeatedly hitting the board until you have um, a fairly fine surface uh, that when you drag the brush over that you get kind of a stipple effect um, but these days I'm laying in um, a much heavier uh, sort of gesso uh, coating uh, with a palette knife and um, really laying it on there pretty thick um, I have found a good compromise though too thick isn't good for me um, and that's why uh, you'll see in the, the video I'll be sharing with you tomorrow uh, which is one of those heavily textured boards where um, there were quite a few I ended up having to sand down because I just felt that the texture was too in your face it was too much and uh, I ended up with a good result doing that too I mean not that uh, I don't think I would do a lot of that with uh, intentionally you know paint a whole first color pass and then sand it down and have all those bits of uh, burnt, uh, burnt umber peeking through that I've got to cover up but uh, I did it and uh, those paintings actually look good so you know not a problem really but yeah, not not something I want to make a part of my process permanently. Um, anyway, so working on 25 Days of Tonalism Volume 3, doing it for you because I can see, I have eyes. I know that the Tonalist Studies After the Masters are some of the more popular posts that I put up on YouTube. Um, but you could do something for me. Yes, you can. You can go to my website. A lot of you already follow the blog through there, uh, but uh, many of you are now aware I have a store there, and on my store, I have some pretty awesome paintings for sale. In fact, uh, one of the things I've been doing to tie into the Toneless Minute series is I've been trying to pop it on the store if it's going out onto YouTube, just so you, if you're inspired, you, uh, you see uh, how I painted it. Um, you've seen uh, the high-res images on the blog and you're going wow that's a really good one I really like that um, then you can just go to the store and buy it that's my plan that's one of, one of the things I'm trying to do and I can't say I can always do that I can't always do that sometimes in the toneless minutes I've got to because they're they're rolling out five days a week uh, I'm gonna get into older things in some cases things are already sold um, or uh, in some cases things I have uh, here in my inventory that I will put on the store but you know that can be uh, no guarantees there also I'm wondering I'm thinking about on the next uh, I, I have had a tendency of sitting on these uh, toneless uh, master studies but I'm thinking uh, perhaps with volume 3 that that may be the one where 
I might put a section up on the store just to sell those. Um, I have sold those in the past and um, uh, when I exhibited them out here in New Zealand and uh, I ended up I ended up having to repaint them again uh, for the video series because I hadn't really thought it through but uh, people liked them I was happy to sell them and I am happy to sell them um, but uh, so far I've been keeping everything together in a group and uh, I'm thinking about that I'll let you know stay tuned to this channel for more information anyway thanks for joining me go to my site landscapepainter.co.nz YouTube subscribers get 10% off on the store, 10%. Just type the word fine art. I'll be back tomorrow with a, another video of my own stuff. Come back, and until then, take good care. Stay out of trouble.